at 10%, and in 2005, it was at 5.4%. It's now 3.9%. Nuclear power, dirty, dangerous, and expensive. Let's talk about dirty. Everyone, everyone, the media says nuclear power is clean. That's why we need it. We need to go away from, from carbon producing energy. That's not the case. With nuclear power, only 11%, excuse me, 11% of the carbon produced by nuclear power plants is actually part of the operation. And that's what they refer to as clean. But if you take uranium mining, the building of the power plant, the decommissioning of the power plant, the storage of the fuel, it is much, much dirtier than the press will tell you. And in fact, it's two to five times dirtier than solar, than wind, and hydroelectric. This is a picture of the Unit 4 at Daiichi, the Fukushima. Uh, the spent fuel pool design, if you recall from um, the news stories, um, the pools that cool the spent fuel are four to five stories above the ground, same as the Columbia Generating Station. What a crazy design it is. And those are still in danger. We have not seen the last of the Fukushima problem, and in fact, the radiation is increasing, both the water and in the air. Bob, excuse me, Bob Alvarez, who's a former Nuclear Regulatory Commission policy analyst and an advisor to the White House, said, quote, Columbia Generating, Generating Station spent fuel pool is similar to those in Japan. and could be damaged in a strong earthquake, a terrorist attack, or an industrial accident. He continued to say that spent fuel pools are the most vulnerable components at operating reactors. Let's look at some of the CGS problems to date. Safety. April 2012, NRC, which is the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, cited CGS management for incorrectly calibrated monitor that measured radioactivity of the discharges into the air. This miscalibration has occurred for 11 years. Electrical fires. There have been fires in 2003, 2009, and 2012, and NRC has actually cited CGS management for these um, inadequacies in the elect electrical wiring. Aging parts. The maintenance is taking longer and longer. Every two years they have a planned refueling that occurs where they shut the plant down. It usually takes 80 days, that's the schedule. Two years ago it took 175 days because they had a condenser that they had to replace. And each time they do this, it'll take longer and longer as the parts are aged. Wildfires. We think of that area as totally devoid of, of things that grow. Well, this is a wildfire and they happen all the time in eastern Washington and eastern Oregon. This is one from last summer and a recent one burned 3,000 acres on the reservation. It temporarily, temporarily closed both of the highways that that um, go into the reservation. That's just a naturally occurring thing that happens every year. Earthquakes. Bob Alvarez talked about earthquakes. Until about five years ago, most people thought that, uh, even scientists thought that that area was um, safe from earthquakes because it was away from the coast. But there's evidence that in 1872, there was a 7.4 earthquake about 50 miles from CGS, from Hanford. 7.4. That star is at the foot, um, let's see, the epicenter was at the south end of Priest Lake. 
So if anybody knows the geography up there, very, very close to Hanford. And this magnitude of earthquake was felt from northern British Columbia down to Salem, Oregon. Massive earthquake. Of course, there were hardly any people there. Um, uh, CGS is designed to withstand supposedly a 6.9 earthquake. The area has already had one that exceeds that. Not only that, there was a four-year study done um, by scientists and supported by the Army Corps of Engineers and the Bureau of Reclamation that says there are 11 known earthquake fault lines that run through Hanford. It's part of what they call the Yakima Fold. There's an extensive 350-page document online that you can take a look at and see um, what they say. It's tied to the uh, Puget Sound subduction zone and run, runs all the way into Oregon. By the way, the Department of Energy has decided to do their own research on earthquakes on Hanford. Here's an excerpt real quickly from <clears throat> the report, which by the way was published in August of last year. The consulting seismologist Ivan Wong says the risk comes primar prim primarily from crumpling of the Earth's crust roughly between Oregon and Washington border. Those folds, those geological structures we see in the Yakima fold, uh, are left underlain by faults that can rupture in large magnitude earthquakes, probably in the range of of the upper magnitude um, sixes and sevens. 